Hey everyone, Andrew here. Let's talk about writing declarative PHP. You might have heard that term thrown around before, declarative programming, or its opposite, imperative programming. Well, if you aren't sure about what they are, let me give you a few examples. So in PHP, let's say that we had an array of items, and we want to go through each of them to return the ones that match some kind of criteria, like ones that have more than five characters. You may be tempted to do something like this, Starting out with an empty array, we'll call it filtered items, and then a for each loop of our items as item. If the string length of the item is greater than five, then we add that item to the filtered items array. Now at the end of this loop, we'll return back or just print R the filtered items array. So if we run this, we see that we get back an array just containing items that have over five characters. So our code does work, but this is an example of imperative programming. We are explicitly detailing every step needed to get to the final result. We start off with an empty array, and then for each of the items in our array, if that element matches, we add it to the array, and then we return back that filtered array. This works, and it's not inherently bad programming or an anti-pattern or anything like that. But the consensus is that there's easier ways to handle things like this with a different paradigm. And that's where declarative programming comes into play. So let's get rid of this here, and we'll still keep filtered items. Except now, let's think about how we can declare what we want the end result to be, or what's done to our data. PHP has a few declarative methods for handling arrays, and the one that's most useful in this case would be array filter. This takes two arguments, the first one being an array, so our items array, and the second is a callback function to be used on that array. I don't have a function declared, so we can just use an anonymous one, so function item. So inside this function, we have access to each item in the array, and whether the value is returned true or false is what decides whether or not this item is returned back to our filtered items array. So I can just do return string length, of the item is greater than five. And so now running this, oops, I forgot a semicolon. And so now running this, we get the same result as we did earlier with our imperative method, but we reduce this down to just three lines. And now with newer versions of PHP, we can actually reduce this down to one line using an arrow function. So let's get rid of this anonymous function here, and we can just say array filter items. And for the callback, fn item arrow string length of the item is greater than five. And so running this one more time, we get the same result back. If you're not familiar with this new notation, I will link a tutorial in the description below you should check out. So now that's a pretty drastic difference from what we saw earlier, not just in lines, but in readability. You are now declaring filtered items is an array that is filtered from items where each item string length is greater than five. That's it. Declarative programming helps developers and more importantly, maintainers of software understand particular areas of a code base without having to make a mental map of the different moving parts when you lay out each step needed. I mentioned earlier that PHP has a few methods for dealing with arrays in a declarative way. Array map and array reduce are another two. But we can think about writing declarative PHP in other ways as well. For instance, pulling or pushing data from a database. In vanilla PHP, we can reach for something like PDO. And then we can go ahead and use it like so. So let's say we wanted to get all users from a database. We'd create a statement, PDO query. And then we run our while loop, while row equals statement fetch. We can echo out items in the row based on the attributes in the database, so like username. But if we wanted to get a little more complex with this, and let's say that we wanted to select an individual user, then we'd have to do PDO prepare, and then we'll have to call the execute uh, method on the statement, passing in the username, and then get the user from the statement's fetch method. And again, this works, but it's an imperative way of writing this. We are listing out every step needed to retrieve our data, initializing the database, preparing a statement, executing that statement, fetching the data, 
And then down here, we'll have to determine if that data even exists and then display it back to our user. Instead, it would be nice if we can just say, all right, find the row with a username of a schmillion and get that user back. And so for that, we can abstract this out into a wrapper class or use an ORM like Doctrine or Eloquent. This allows the code that we are actually using for this method to be more declarative, to have a more declarative syntax. So now again, we are declaring the user should be a get from the PDO wrapper class from the user's table, where the username is equal to a schmellion, the first one retrieved. So without knowing how the underlying architecture is working, we understand what this variable should be including. It should be a single object returned from the database matching these credentials. Laravel's helpers are also a great example of declarative programming. For instance, let's say that we have a path. And we want to manipulate that has open orders class name to get a URL appropriate slug from it. The imperative way to think about this might be to explode the path into parts and then get the last part from it. Remove the .php so we just end up with the class name. and then perform some kind of manipulation on that name in order to create a slug, like str to lower, so it's all lowercase. Now if we return that slug value and run this code, we see that we get back this value down here, which is what we expected. And yeah, some of this can be condensed down to more than one line. I just kind of have it spaced out here. So let's try to condense it. Just taking a glance at this, and it might just be me and the way my brain works, but this is kind of hard to read and take in when you first look at it. Even looking at it for a minute or so, you don't fully grasp what's happening until you individually pick apart each part and mentally put a model together for what slug ends up being. Instead, classes like Laravel's string helper can ease that burden and let you write more declarative PHP. So instead of all of this, we can start with slug, which is the final value that we need. str of path base name dot php and slug. And we can even put a dash in here, which should put dashes between the words has open and orders. So now if I go and run this, we see we're getting back the slug that we expected has open orders. And looking at this line of code here, just glancing at it, it makes more sense. String of path. So we have this string here that we are manipulating. We get the base name minus the .php at the end of it, and then turn it into a slug. So automatically, even though the variable is named slug and we kind of have an idea of what to expect from that, even if it wasn't, glancing at this line of code, we understand what should be expected inside of that variable. And that's where the value of declarative programming really comes from. It's about using existing libraries and creating structures in your code base to show off what's expected from an end result instead of each step along the way. All right, I think that's about it for this video. I hope I've inspired you to start thinking about writing more declarative PHP and the benefits that it might have to maintainers of your code base, whether that's someone else or just future you. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or in the comments below. Thanks for watching.